This is part two of understanding weather. In the previous video, we discussed how to read the skew T portion of a sounding. And today we're discussing how to read the hodograph. This is a special graph used in meteorology to visualize wind profiles from upper air soundings. Essentially, this is telling us what our horizontal winds are doing with altitude at a specific location. Our X axis represents our east west wind component, while our Y axis represents our north south wind component. Each data point here represents our changing altitude. So our first data point will be right around the surface, and then we're about a half kilometer off the surface up to one kilometers, two kilometers, three kilometers, four, and so on. And you can actually look off here to the left. This is represented in our skew T chart, and you can see the changing wind speeds and direction with altitude. So say our winds at the surface were moving about 15 knots to the northwest. This vector here represents winds moving to the northwest, and you can see this first point is plotted at 15 knots, right between our 10 knot and 20 knot circle here. And then as we move up into the atmosphere to about one kilometer above the surface, our winds are moving at about 30 knots to the north. So you can see here, you would plot our winds straight up to the north at around 30 knots, which is our third ring here. So 10, 20, and 30 knots. You would then plot this for our winds two kilometers off the surface, three kilometers, four kilometers, five kilometers, typically at least till around your six kilometers off the surface, which would be just over where our main jet stream sits. So what do I see when I take a quick glance at this photograph? We have some directional shear. You can clearly see as we move up with altitude going from our one kilometer to three three kilometer to five kilometer. Our winds at the surface are originally moving to the northwest and then to the northeast and then to the east. Now, if you think about what a tornado does, it rotates. So having our winds in our atmosphere rotating with height signals that we may have that rotation necessary to produce a tornado. Now, there's two things we look for when talking about wind shear, and it's not just the change in wind direction with altitude, but also the change in wind strength with altitude. In this example, we actually don't see much change in wind speed with altitude. We just see a lot of change in wind direction. If we were to see this look more like this, and then as we get up higher into the atmosphere, our winds actually increase, and then they can even decrease eventually. But you can kind of see in an example like this, we would actually go from 30 knot winds down at the surface, up to 40, up to maybe 50 or 60 knots, back down to 40. That change in wind speed with altitude and wind direction with altitude is something that can signal, like I said, the potential for strong tornadoes. We're looking for some sort of loop or even a hook. Sometimes you'll see a sounding that actually loops loops like this, and that's another sign that we could have some strong rotation at a certain level of the atmosphere. What you learned today is what the majority of people are only looking for when they read a hodograph. I appreciate you guys watching this video. If you like this type of content, feel free to throw me a follower sub. I make posts like this every day, and I stream five days a week to try and answer all of your weather-related questions. I'll see you in the next video.